Hello, this is Mr. Fay, and welcome to Mr. Fay's Science Basement. Um, I just wanted to throw together a quick video for folks that missed the Zoom conference yesterday uh, dealing with the natural history timeline. Now, I know that many of you have watched a brain pop and an ed puzzle, both having to do with uh, natural history, but I fear that both of them kind of fail to drive home the amount of time that takes place between some important natural history events. Uh, so I'm going to walk you through that process now. Before the video conference started, kids were directed to uh, draw a 12 inch line on a sheet of paper. Now, if kids had a ruler, that was great. If not, I just had them draw a diagonal line across a regular sheet of paper. Uh, and that works out to be a little bit over 12 inches, which will work out perfectly. Students were then directed to label one edge of the line today and the other point on the line on the far side as the beginning of Earth. And this was going to serve as a timeline, just like a timeline that you would have in social studies. All right, so students were then challenged to put 11 events on the natural history timeline in the order in which they think they appeared. I'm gonna run you through those events quickly, uh, but realize there are some details in here that will affect where you put them. Uh, one, they had to talk about the first eukaryotic cells appearing on the planet. Uh, two, they had to place the age of the dinosaurs, that's the dinosaurs at their peak, uh, not their extinction, but when we had the most species of dinosaurs. Uh, next, when they think that the first humans appeared, and rather than being modern humans, I chose to use uh, Lucy. Uh, Lucy is one of our earliest ancestors that we have. If you want to call them a cave person, you could, um, but it's a little bit more complicated than that. Uh, next, uh, water did not always exist on Earth, so we want to put on that timeline when we think the first water appeared. Um, this one's actually pretty easy. The origin of the Earth is the far end of the timeline, so that one obviously is the first event to take place. Uh, number six, you have to figure out where Pangaea, the supercontinent, uh, was all together. Many of you remember that from sixth grade. Um, we want to know when the first life appears, which appears to be prokaryotes, which are bacteria, um, or at least similar to modern day bacteria. When oxygen first appeared in the atmosphere. Uh, so it doesn't always seem that oxygen was in our atmosphere. So we want to know roughly when that oxygen first appeared. Um, when the first animals appeared, and again, animals are multicellular, multicellular eukaryotic uh, animals or organisms, I should say. Um, when was the last ice age on your timeline? And then finally, where do the first plants appear? So your first challenge is to pause the video and think about what order did these events actually go in. So let's see how you do. Why don't you pause it now? Alrighty, so hopefully you have your order decided. If you've cheated, you can just look and see what the order actually is, which I'll be showing you in a second. So uh, this right here is a little simulation of what you might have sitting in front of you. I have my line drawn that starts with today and ends with the beginning of the earth down here at the bottom. That should be pointing at the very tip. Uh, and that is roughly uh, 12 inches long. So I'm gonna take this ruler, it might not be perfectly lined up, but that's okay. I'm gonna take this ruler and use this ruler as a reference point. I'm gonna try to move that zero a little closer down to the start of the line. Uh, that's gonna be close enough for now. So uh, as you go all the way down here to 12 inches or so, this is gonna be the beginning of the earth. And this right here is today, like today's actual date. So if we start grabbing the things in the order in which they appear, the first one is obvious, it's the origin of the earth. And again, I didn't even put it on here because you would just put the origin of the earth at 12 right here at, at the beginning of the earth. So I'm not gonna bother putting that one on and dragging it down because that one is pretty obvious. So the first thing of the ones you have to choose from that would happen next is actually the formation of liquid water. Um, so if I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab this liquid water forms, I'm gonna put the corner of this box that you can see here down about where it happens. So the corner of that text box, I'm gonna drop, not here at the very beginning of Earth, but I actually need to back that up to about here or so. 
So you can see that the Earth existed for quite a while, a pretty good gap of time without any, uh, even without any liquid water on it. And that's one of the first things that was going to happen. Now that we have liquid water, we're going to have the first life appear. And that first life appears to be uh, prokaryotic or bacteria-like uh, cells that don't have any organelles, nucleus, don't have mitochondria or anything like that. So I'm going to grab our prokaryotes and put them about where they would appear. Now, a lot of students think that, well, once you have water, you must have life pretty quickly. Actually, it took a little while to get going, and that first life doesn't start to appear in the fossil record until roughly here or so. And again, we're going to go off the corner of that box to give us an idea. Now, a lot of folks that are watching that are, are very, very particular might argue about some of these dates. It really doesn't matter. What we're looking for is a general proportion and order in which um, these things appear to have happened. All right, so now that we got life um, happening, it's time to have our oxygen come about because it's actually thought that those first, um, the first life actually is what gave us our oxygen in the atmosphere. A uh, little bacteria called uh, cyanobacteria uh, or photosynthetic algae actually kicked oxygen by doing photosynthesis into the atmosphere. So let's go ahead and grab our atmospheric oxygen, which is right here. And let's see about how long uh, it took them to uh, fill the atmosphere with oxygen. Actually, I have to go a pretty long time before that starts to take hold. And we're actually going to put it right here. And again, we're looking at the corner of the text box about why, where that's going to happen. So as you can see, uh, we're almost halfway through, uh, a little bit over halfway through the age of the Earth, and we still have all of these items to put on here. Okay, so now that there's atmospheric oxygen, um, the next thing that's going to come about is our first eukaryotic cells. Uh, and it takes a while for eukaryotic or more complex cells to be able to um, establish themselves. In fact, we have to go all the way down the timeline to relatively recently right here before you have cells uh, that are normal, the ones you think about when you think about cells, cells that have a nuclei or mitochondria, chloroplasts, uh, things like that. So as you can see, compared to the history of the Earth, the eukaryotic cell has a relatively um, recent um, occurrence. All right, once that happens, everything can kind of take off quickly. So after our first eukaryotic cells is going to be when we uh, see our first animal cells. Now these are going to be multicellular uh, eukaryotic organisms. So their cells have nuclei and mitochondria, um, and there are multiple cells making up their, their bodies. Uh, so those things first start to occur. I'm going to drag it right about here or so. So these are going to be our first animals. One of the things that you notice is we did leave plants behind. A lot of students think that, think that plants came first, then animals. Actually appears to be the other way around. Um, our first animals appear in the water uh, and they're feeding on these single cellular organisms like these prokaryotes down here and these eukaryotes here. Um, plants actually come around a little bit later and plants are actually the first organism that appear to move to the land. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put these right about here. I know they're going to be pretty close to each other. But the first plants uh, come around um, like really recently. And again, plants live on land. If you can think of any aquatic plants like a lodi or something like that, those are actually the de descendants from plants that lived on land and kind of worked their way back to water, which is kind of an interesting thought. Okay, we have four major events and we do not have much time left on our timeline. So this is going to get uh, really ugly down there. So of the things that we have left, um, Pangea will actually work its way onto the timeline next. And uh, Pangea, man, we're getting inside of an inch here. Uh, Pangea, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pop about about right here, about 300 million years ago. So in sixth grade, you learned about Pangaea being a long time ago, but you need to realize in a geologic time scale, Pangaea is relatively uh, recent, a relatively recent occurrence. Um, after that, we can go ahead and put our dinosaurs on. So I'm gonna grab our dinosaurs here. And again, this is not the dinosaur extinction. This is gonna be our age of dinosaurs, like our golden age, where we have the most species and they're very, very prevalent. I'm actually gonna put those right around, I'd say about 
200 million years ago. So as you can see, we're going to be super jammed up. Um, and that one could actually move a little bit down, but I want you to be able to read it. Uh, so that dinosaur extinction is even more recent than that, if you can imagine that. So I'm not even going to get into that at this point because it would be right on the end of the timeline. That leaves us with two things. Um, the first humans, or at least pre-humans that you can imagine, and the last ice age. Um, the truth of the matter is, if you could see this little tiny gap that you have right here, that little tiny gap um, represents tens of millions of years. Uh, and humans would actually fit in about a tenth of one of those little gaps, if you can imagine that, okay? That's assuming that that Lucy and those cavemen are under a little bit under three million years old, those fossil remains. I actually can't put it on the timeline because anything I tried to draw on this timeline, the, the pen mark would actually be too thick to even put it on there. So I'm just gonna take first humans and simply drag them down to just about today because I, I mean it's not even accurate enough to get it on there in a way that makes sense and then finally the last ice age the last ice age we're coming out of is about twelve thousand years ago I, I need a microscope to zoom in to that last you know tenth of an inch or so and uh, even be able to see where that last ice age would be so what's the point when you see a natural history timeline, uh, you need to realize that the order of events is important, but what's even more astounding is the amount of time that takes place uh, between each of these events and how everything we think of when we think about life has really jammed up into this last inch or so. Uh, so hopefully that helps uh, with your understanding of what natural history timeline looks like and how it relates to uh, life science.